Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, and for those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I'm a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. When I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a client and we're talking about pet food, one of the biggest topics of conversation that pops up is food sensitivities, specifically chicken allergies. Why are chicken allergies so common in pets? Why is that considered one of the number one things to avoid in pet food? And should you avoid chicken altogether so that it doesn't cause any issues for your dog? The very first thing that I like to talk about when it comes to approaching the topic of food sensitivities and specifically sensitivities to ingredients like chicken is how we got to this point. And there's a lot involved in pet food that can lead to food sensitivities. In the case of chicken, there's a couple factors that have created such a common food insensitivity today. When it comes to the history of processed and commercial pet food, we've been feeding chicken a very, very long time, and some of the ingredients that we know and love today are relatively new. Things like salmon or duck or rabbit or kangaroo are all relatively new to the pet food industry as of the last 10-15 years or so. Chicken, on the other hand, is one that has been around for a very long time, and that's a big reason why there's such an insensitivity today. When you think of a generation of a dog's life, it's a much shorter period of time than a generation of our own. Typically, a generation of a human's life is about 20 years, and for pets, it's closer to two or three. This is important because any genetic predispositions are more likely to become apparent to us over the course of our pet's life as opposed to our own. If we wanted to see the prolonged effects of a certain food ingredient in humans, typically we would have to wait multiple generations in order to start seeing those things pop up consistently. With our pets, with our dogs, these things can show up over the course of a few decades rather than a few centuries. All this to say, since we've been feeding chicken in our pet foods for the last 60, 70 years at least in our highly processed extruded pet foods, then we've gone through a couple generations. After feeding generations and generations and generations chicken formulas, and almost exclusively chicken formulas, it's more common for them to develop a food sensitivity to this ingredient. Now with this, the quality of that ingredient also matters. So the quality of the chicken plays a big part in whether or not it's gonna be a potential food allergen and also plays a role in how, again, we got to a point where chicken's such a common food allergen today. For example, a chicken breast is going to digest a lot differently and is going to be used by the body a lot differently than chicken beaks and feet. It doesn't mean that chicken be beaks and feet don't have any value, because they do, but as a primary diet, you're not going to get the same benefits as a chicken breast. For so many years, not only were we feeding chicken, but we were also feeding lower quality chicken. There's definitely a lot more options nowadays as far as a spectrum of ingredient quality, but definitely when kibble was first being created, we were not feeding our pets the best of the best quality chicken in those foods. Even today, a lot of the times when I work with pet parents who have a dog with chicken insensitivities, yes, all chicken will usually trigger those insensitivities at the beginning, but as we work to reduce the inflammation and the actual symptoms of those food allergies, frequently we're able to reincorporate higher quality sources of that chicken, and it's not going to trigger the same as whatever past incidences we were feeding. This is not a problem exclusive to chicken by any means. There's a plenty of ingredients that have been associated heavily with food allergens because we were feeding them for so long and at such a low quality. However, does this mean that we should avoid chicken altogether? I think not. My approach to food allergies with pets is that we want to pinpoint what the problem is and still have a world of other things that we can have access to. There are certainly some methods when it comes to food allergies in pets where it's the opposite, so it's this is the thing that doesn't cause any issues, so we're going to avoid everything else in case that they do. This is a common method, especially among people and veterinarians, where working through an elimination diet and figuring out what is safe and what is not safe is more work than what pet owners are willing to put in, and that's totally fine. If getting the one option that works really well for you is your best case scenario, then that's absolutely fantastic. But generally, we're able to narrow it down 
and still have a lot of other options, which allows us to give generally a more well-rounded nutrient profile overall. When people automatically want to avoid chicken and they're afraid of chicken because they know it's a common food allergen, that's totally fine as well. But keep in mind that the ingredient quality might have more to do with it than the ingredient itself. So why is chicken such a common food allergen in dogs? In part because we've fed it for so long and in another part because we've fed it at such a low quality for so long. As our dogs build up these intolerances and their body becomes more and more on guard to all of these things that are causing them problems, they're more likely to have issues going forward. But if we're able to identify that there is a problem and we're able to swap our dog's food to something that they can thrive on while they heal their bodies, sometimes we can't introduce that chicken again and not have the same exaggerated effects as they did before. Common symptoms of food allergies in pets include itchy paws and skin, red rashes, raised bumps, an increase in yeast is common as well. If you're tackling food allergies with your pet, I highly recommend working alongside a veterinarian and a pet food specialist so that as a team you're able to find the correct line of attack for your pet, whether that be an elimination diet where we can work to identify what the problem is and what all of our options are, or if you opt to do a more structured food where this is what you feed and they do really well on that. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you've not already. We do a lot of pet training and nutrition videos here. If you have any additional questions that you would like answered, be sure to leave those down in the comments below, whether they're about other pet food allergies, pet food, or pets in general. I will see you all in my next video. Bye!